Hey guys, it's Sade. If you saw my last video, you know that I came up with this swatching template. And I had swatches of all my colors before, but I thought that it was a good idea to make everything consistent. And so I decided to swatch out all of the colors that I have. Since I was going to do all of this, I thought it was a good time to go over my palette and share a bit of the colors that I've chosen with you. Now, I have a ton of colors way too many colors, don't follow my example, it's problematic, I have an issue, friends don't let friends get watercolor obsession. I'm just going to have a time lapse of all the colors that I swatched out and I'm just going to talk about a couple of the, I'm going to talk about a couple of the more interesting colors, not all of them because that would take way too long. So just a little bit about my palette, my main palette anyway, I tried to choose single pigment colors, colors that are fairly light fast, and the colors that are fairly non-toxic. I try to stay away from the cadmiums, cobalts, cerulean, manganese, iridium, all of those kinds of colors. So you might notice that my palette is pretty heavily on the modern synthetic pigments. I'm kind of brand agnostic. I just care about getting the highest quality version of whatever pigment I'm looking for. A lot of the reasons why I have brands like Schmincke and Old Holland is because of where I live, and it's really expensive to get stuff like Daniel Smith and M. Graham. Okay, so let's start with some of the colors in my main palette. The yellows. First up is PY53 Nickel Titanate Yellow by Dollar Rowney. I have a yellow obsession. I don't know what it is, but I am really picky about the yellows that I have, and I have been searching for the most cool yellow that I can possibly get, and as far as I can tell, this is it. I really wanted a color that will make insanely bright greens, and this definitely fits the bill. The only problem is that it's a little opaque but it's not so bad and I'm definitely happy to have it on my palette. The next two colors are PY175 Lemon Yellow Hue and PY97 Transparent Yellow, both by Winsor & Newton. The reason why I'm picking out these colors is because they're beautiful, vibrant, transparent yellows, which is a little difficult to get with yellows. Yellows can often be opaque but they are both discontinued. I managed to get these on the sales rack at my art store, which often has older or discontinued pigments. And I'll be really sad when I run out of PY175 because it's a great alternative to PY3, which is the more common cool yellow that you get in a palette, and it is more light fast. And the only other brand that makes this pigment, I believe, is My Mary Blue, and theirs apparently is kind of chalky. Next color is PY153, Senelia Yellow Light by Senelia. Uh, Senelia just makes the best yellows, just period. If I could get all of my yellows from Senelia, I probably would. PY74, Schwenningen Yellow Light by Old Holland. This is a unique color for Old Holland, and it's really interesting because it's transparent and lifting. Many yellows are staining, so if you need a yellow that is lifting, this is a great one to go for. Actually, all of the colors from Old Holland are very lifting, so if you need to use that technique a lot, I would definitely recommend that brand. PY43, Go With I by Daniel Smith. I use this instead of yellow ochre. I really don't like yellow ochre, but this is a very similar hue and I really like the texture that it gives and it kind of glows. PBR24, Naples Yellow by M. Graham. So I think a lot of people would probably think this is an ugly paint because it is super opaque. I really like it because you can dilute it a lot and when you do, you get this very glowing color. Also, opaque paints are, can be useful sometimes when you want to add a bit of body to a color. So sometimes I use it for painting nature scenery, for beaches, and also if I dilute it and add it to another color, it can add a little bit of body to skin tones after you have already done a lot of transparent layers. PO49, Quinacridone Gold by Daniel Smith. I think we all know this color. I have several tubes because it is going to run out. It's just a gorgeous color. Probably some of my most favorite colors are all duotones. This is a duotone. It goes from a really dark mass tone to a really light glowing orangey yellow in dilution. 
I actually changed the way I painted after I got this color. Awesome. Everybody knows it. Get it. Oranges. P062 and P071. Chrome Orange and Translucent Orange by Schwinka. I think they probably make the best oranges. They are transparent, bright, vibrant, highly pigmented, just great. These are colors that are hard to find in other ranges and they're very finely milled. They're really good for botanical painting. P048 Quinacridone Burnt Orange by Daniel Smith. This is really similar to the Quinacridone Gold and actually many of the Quinacridone Gold mixtures these days are made with this color plus a yellow. I use this a lot for portrait painting. It's kind of a nice alternative to burnt sienna. P065 Golden Baroque Red by Old Holland. This is also a good alternative to burnt sienna because it doesn't granulate. This is a unique color to Old Holland. It's a kind of brick red. It's really pretty. PBR41 Translucent Brown by Schwenke. This is Probably the color that goes in every single one of my portraits, especially for anybody with darker skin. I don't like to use burnt umber or burnt sienna or any of those pigments because they granulate and I really don't like that texture in skin. And this color is really great. It's basically a neutral brown, so you can add red to warm it up or blue to cool it down. If you mix it with indanthrine blue, you get a nice dark brown, so it's really great all around. P073 Scarlet Pyro by M. Graham. This is definitely the brightest color on my palette. It is absolutely crazily, insanely saturated. I think when I got it, I was just playing around with it because I enjoyed the feeling of it burning my eyeballs. You have to be careful with it though because it is so pigmented and so saturated that it can become opaque, but I really think that it's a fairly transparent color. A little bit goes a long, long way. Reds. PR206 Matter Brown, just a gorgeous color. It is just so beautiful for portraits, for gentle flowers, makes the most amazing warm brown skin tones, the most amazing blush. I was so happy when I got this color. It really changed the way that I paint portraits. PR179 Deep Red by Schwinka. This is often called Pure Maroon. I use this color all the time. If I had to downsize my palette, this is definitely one of the colors that I would keep. I mix this with Pyroline Green all of the time to make super dark neutral blacks. Everyone should have this color. PR209 Quinacridone Red by Dalarani. This is a color that I basically discovered by accident. I was just trying to check out the Dalarani line and I didn't want to get the same pigment that I already had. I've heard before that Quinacridone Red it's not really that important if you already have quinacridone rose or quinacridone magenta, but this was just the perfect color to go closer to a neutral red. It's just really juicy looking, if that makes any kind of sense. It's transparent and staining. You can use it for nearly everything. It's very vibrant. I really like this color. I'm going to try it out in different brands, but I do like the Dollar Rowney version. PV19 Quinacridone Rose by M. Graham and PR122 Purple Magenta by Schwinka. These two colors are often used basically interchangeably. I think more artists have PV19 on their palette than PR122. Daniel Smith actually just came out with PR122 if you're interested in it and you don't want to get it from Schwinka. I really like using PR122 for making really vibrant purples and violets. Both of them make really nice ones, but PR122 has a slight advantage. PV19 is a little easier to mix in general if you don't want to be very specific. So you maybe don't need both of them, but I like having both of them on my palette. Purples. I only have two purples on my palette. One is PV15 Ultramarine Violet Deep by M. Graham, and the other one is PV55 Quinacridone Violet by Windsor & Newton. This was part of one of their special edition sets, and it's not the most common purple. The most common purple is dioxazine violet, which I really try to avoid because it tends not to be light fast. Even in brands that make pretty good quality paints and are pretty good with their light fastness, it seems like there can be some variation between batches. So I just try to leave it alone and I try PV55 instead, and that's a really nice pretty purple. I use this purple a lot for portraits, for 
painting people with darker skin. It's really great for mixing with browns. I also use it for underpainting because purple will disappear under many different layers of colors. It's really good for making shadows. It's just awesome overall. Blues. So I have two ultramarine blues on my palette. I have ultramarine blue deep by Old Holland and ultramarine finest by Schwenke. The reason why is because one is super duper granulating, actually my favorite granulating color of all time probably. It's just beautiful. And the other one is probably the least granulating ultramarine that you can find. If you do not like granulation in your ultramarine, get Ultramarine Finest by Schwenke. The pigments are milled finer than basically any other ultramarine, so that's the reason why it doesn't granulate. And so when I just want to mix a warm blue that isn't staining, I use Ultramarine Finest. When I want that granulation, I use the old Holland. PB60 in Danthrene Blue. I don't think I could paint without this. <laughs> it's my favorite blue. It's really nice, really dark. You can mix it with just about anything to get a really nice rich dark color. I love it. And it's light fast, unlike genuine indigo. And it's also a single pigment color. PB27 Prussian Blue by Schmincke. This is the blue that I use to mix most colors. At least the Schmincke version is a bit less intense than ultramarine blue. It has a bit less tinting strength and it mixes gentler colors, nicer greens. So this is what I use for mixing most blues, especially when painting portraits. I don't like to use ultramarine blue when painting portraits. PB15 colon 1 Thalo Blue by Schmincke and PB15 colon 3 by M. Graham. These are the two Thalo Blues. To be honest, I'm probably going to kick one of these off of my palette because the shades are too close to one another. I wanted a red and green leaning Thalo Blues, but they're both really close. I'm probably going to replace the M. Graham one with a Rembrandt Thalo Blue red shade, which is further apart from the Schmincke. Greens. PG7 Thalo Green by Schwenka and PG36 Thalo Green Yellow Shade by M. Graham. At first, I didn't think that there was a point in having two Thalo Greens. There definitely is. There's a clear difference. PG36 makes amazing greens. If you mix it with a yellow, you can get these crazy vibrant spring greens. And PG7 is much better for mixing with a blue. This is definitely one case where it's good to get two versions of the color. PBK31 Pyroline Green by Winsor Newton. Just like I said about Pyroline Maroon and Indanthrene Blue, this is my third in my three colors that I use to mix up really dark neutrals. Just a really great color. PBR7 and PB15 Cascade Green by Daniel Smith. This is the only non-single pigment paint I have on my palette and the reason why is because it is just too pretty. I don't use it very often but when I do, I use it for the granulation and the way that the two pigments separate from one another. Even though this would be easy to mix by myself, it's way easier just to have it there for me already. PY129 Brown Green by Sunilia, like I said, the best yellows. I consider this a kind of green yellow. It's a little bit more on the green side than on the yellow side. It's interesting because of the dual tone nature. In the mass tone, it's greener, but when you dilute it, it becomes a really, really cool yellow. Mixes interestingly with purples to make browns. It's just a fun color to have. A note, I also have one black on my palette. I normally don't believe in having black on your palette, but PBK11, Lunar Black by Daniel Smith, is just crazy for granulation. You can mix it with nearly anything to make it a really granulating color. And that's just really interesting for doing things like rocks or stone walls. That was my main palette. I have a ton of other colors that I'm either testing or that I am not interested in having in my main palette for whatever reason. Um, and I'm just going to talk about a couple of those. So NR9 Rose Matter Genuine by Winsor Newton. I can really see why people loved this pigment so much. It's just like a gorgeous pink. It granulates softly and it's lifting. That's not something that you get often in a pink, but it's not light fast, so it's not on my palette. The same thing with PR122 Opera Rose by Winsor & Newton. This is not light fast because the reason why it is so super bright and saturated is because it uses a dye and that dye is super duper fugitive. I've heard some people say that it lasts really long for them, but I have actually had this color fade in a closed book, so I would never use it. 
PV16 Helio Turquoise by Schmincke. This is really interesting. I just got this color. It's somewhere in between phthalo blue and phthalo green. You can technically mix this color, but I think it could be really useful for painting a tropical sea or making really nice greens. I've heard that PB17 is also really pretty and I'd like to try that someday. PG23 Green Earth by Rembrandt. This is probably a rare and kind of strange watercolor. I wanted to get it because it is a single pigment green. I also like that it's just like a very soft color and it granulates gently. I think this could be really good for landscapes and I want to try it for Vidai for doing underpaintings in portraits. PV42 Royal Purple Lake by Old Holland. I saw this color recommended by an artist and I have never really worked with it or tried it so I thought it was interesting to see. It is a pink pigment. If you really wanted a pink pink then Royal Purple Lake is probably your good bet if you want to get a light fast color. I've already used it as a portrait color and it's a really good primary magenta color. PBR7 Raw Sienna Deep by Old Holland. This is a color that I use instead of yellow ochre for portraits or I just got this color and I recently started using it. It's a lot more transparent, it's a lot more vibrant, I really like it. If you normally use yellow ochres, try raw sienna, but it has to be PBR7. If it's made with PY42, then that is actually just yellow ochre. PBR7 is different and it's much more transparent. I way prefer this color for doing portraits. PR255 and PY184, Permanent Red Middle and Permanent Lemon Yellow by Rembrandt. I have the Van Gogh versions of these colors colors in my palette at the moment and I'm probably going to switch them out with these Rembrandts because this is the artist grade version to their upper student grade level and they are much more transparent and much more vibrant. Last thing, PB15 Thalo Blue Red Shade by Rembrandt. I said I was going to switch out the M Gram for this one because this one is further away from the Schmincke that I already have. Whew, so that's it. That is a ton of colors. I have way too many colors. You don't need this many colors. No one needs this many colors. I'm going to have all of these colors on my website if you want to check out the swatches or check out the charts. I actually am also making a sort of watercolor swatch database that you can also see on my website so that you can click any pigment number or any color and it will come up with all of those ones that I have in the database. I hope that this can be a really useful resource. I don't have as many as Jane Blondell does, but hers is really awesome and you should check that out also. Finally, thank you so much for 300 subscribers. I'm going to have a giveaway in my next review video and I'm really excited for that. See you guys later. Bye!